Hey, SITC fam. If you like what you're hearing, don't forget to rate us five stars on any podcast platform. Leave us a review wherever you can. And don't forget to subscribe to LL Giselle on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and find us on Facebook at Sonographers in the Cities. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Sonographers in the Cities. I'm Lynn. And I'm Giselle. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. Welcome back to another episode. Sorry, guys, we missed out on a on an episode recently because I got really sick, and uh, Lynn has been very busy too. And I've been working nonstop. Yeah, so. <laughs> workaholic. No, I'm just kidding. I think we no, both are. <laughs> we we both are. It's just like the the place I'm at in my career it's just you know can't can't really be flexible at the moment yeah I mean I could I feel that I think a lot of people who are new grads also can probably relate like you're Mm -hmm. afraid to say no sometimes you're afraid to say no to opportunities but then also like you want to get all this experience in at the same time And yeah, trying to make it work. <laughs> yeah, trying to make it work and stretch out like a million different yeah. ways. I remember that. I still do that. Right? You okay. still have a full-time job and your per diem. Yeah. So uh, starting out, I was working always usually like two jobs. I finally went to a point where I was like, okay, let me just slow down a little bit mm-hmm. after the pandemic. But then again, I ended up getting like two jobs. Yeah. And then went full-time, stayed full-time, and now I'm full-time and per diem again. I don't know. I think it's really cool, though, as a sonographer that we can do that. I think it's pretty awesome, like, working two different environments, being able to, you know, take reins of our schedule, do, you know, what we want with our schedules, you know, if we're fortunate enough to have that opportunity. So yeah. here we are, super busy, but thank you so much, yourself for making the time. So that we can create this episode. (laughs) Yes, and you too. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's a very hard thing to get Lynn and I together because our schedules are so crazy, but Mm -hmm. we are still here and we appreciate all of you guys who are listening. Our last uh, last episode of Building Confidence as a Sonographer got a lot of uh, listens and downloads, so thank you so much. You guys are still here. We're so excited. To do another episode and we always feel so I don't know excited to just talk um mm-hmm. and just be part of this community even though we're very busy and have our own lives we still come together to do this um today is a very interesting episode and I know you guys clicked right. on this because you are curious about what we're going to talk about right and we will be talking about negative experiences as a sonographer, because this is uh, an important topic, we believe, because we're all going to go through it or have gone through it at some point in our sonography journey, either, you know, when you're as a student, new grad, seasoned sonographer like Giselle, you're going to go through it because, you know, every workplace has some positives and negatives. So we hope that at the end of this episode, you'll be able to relate to what we we talked about and that you're not alone if you're experiencing any of these scenarios. Yes, this is actually a very crazy topic. I don't think a lot of people on social media talk about the negative experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we're one of the more like real raw, like tell you guys straight up how it is. And I don't know, sometimes... I'm afraid to do that, but also, for example, like on my YouTube channel, I'm afraid to like say these negative things, but then I see a lot of people comment and they're like happy and grateful that we share our negative experiences. So that's what this podcast is all about. And uh, we are just here to share the truth and hopefully through our experiences, you guys don't have to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. But if you do, you know that you're not alone. So before we get into this negative topic of sorts, I just wanted to uh, bring up 
something that happened to me this morning, which was I woke up, I looked at my emails, and I am audited for ARDMS. So <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I know it happens random, but it's you got audited. Ran- yes, it's random. You guys, oh I've been doing God. this for how long now? So this is crazy. Um, and I know that like being audited is you never really think you're gonna get audited. Uh-huh. But uh, I got the email this morning and I was chosen, I'm the chosen one. So, so so what is the process? Basically, if you have all of your credits in there, you better hope that you have oh. all your credits in there, your CME credits. So for those of you who don't know, CMEs are continuing medical education and it's pretty much getting like a seminar or, or taking a test, taking your registries. Um, those give you CMEs. It's because you need to constantly learn in this field. So what Lynn and I do is we educate you guys, but you have to do actual responses to the educational things that you're doing. If you're reading a book, if you're going to a seminar, a webinar, or listening to a lecture, you have to get credits. And usually they have to be accredited by a certain program. And so for me, I'm just very lucky that I went to a conference last year and I did get my 30 CMEs within those three years. So you have three years to get 30 CMEs. And people have been asking me to explain this a little bit more. So this is your little introduction to CMEs. But I got audited and usually ARDMS audits just random, a random pool of people um, every year. So every year they randomly audit people and I guess I was chosen. So the only reason why I bring this up is because you guys are going to have to go through that. And um, I partnered with IAME, which is online course load where you can get CMEs. And I have a discount code for it. So I just wanted to throw this in here just randomly for whoever's listening because I just can't believe I got audited today. And I'm just so lucky that (laughs) I am part of IAME. And it's so easy to get CMEs on that website. So if you guys want to get easy CMEs quickly at the tip of your fingertips on your phone, on your computer, any time of the day, it's so easy. Just know I have a discount code. So in DM me on Instagram or whatever, get a hold of me so you can be part of that. But yeah, I was audited today. So that was crazy. That was kind of, maybe kind of negative. Me. <laughs> it was a longer for- Literally, I was like, oh, that's something that you guys have to really think about in this career because sometimes we just let it slip by. Apparently, a lot of people, when they're at the end of their three years, they go on to these websites and try to get as many CMEs as they can. Just make it easier for yourselves and like do it at the beginning of your three years so that you don't have to worry about it later on. But yeah, it, it kind of is a negative part of like being a sonographer because you have to sometimes spend a lot of money on these things and travel to go to conferences or pay hundreds of dollars to take a board exam or sit in a seminar. So IAME makes it very easy for you to get them quick easy and uh, I've got a discount code for you so you can use all of them I have three different ones so yeah that I'm is- sure it'll be in the comment the section below yes. on your YouTube on this video <laughs> yeah so just in case you guys need some CMEs I'm here to help you out and this is what we're here for to help you guys get through life and with that we'll go on to negative experience experiences <laughs> <laughs> While being positive. <laughs> yes, at the same time. What's well, the I most common know. thing that happens in Negatively? any workplace? Yeah. Because like... this not this won't be just applying to sonographers, even though we're talking about sonographers' life, right? Any workplace. Like any any workplace, I yeah, feel like like any field has a manager, right? Has a manager, um, assistant manager, mm-hmm. team, staff. So workers, co-workers. Okay, well, the first thing that I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did come up with a couple of things, but like I feel like yeah. if you're saying relating to any any other place and where people who are not even just sonographers that are listening mm-hmm. could relate to, I'd say toxic environments. I don't yes. Know, what do you think? 
<laughs> super common. Super I mean, not common. just like toxic environments, quote unquote, but like also negative. We're talking about negative experiences. I'm talking about like negative people or like just negative coworkers uh-huh. or just negativity in general. Because that can happen, I think, in any career field, in yes. the tech field, mm-hmm. in culinary, mechanics. In medical fields. I definitely know, like, in hospital settings, you know, you have doctors, nurses, different, you know, healthcare staff. And if we all can't work together, ideally, we all should be able to work together. But, you know, there are people who are not nice or yeah. just very not people uh, friendly you know unable to work with others because there are definitely people like that there are doctors like that there are definitely doctors like that <laughs> agreed I think if you guys are in those Facebook groups like sonographers do it in the dark or just sonography like you'll see all of these different stories of toxic environments, negative coworkers, upper management. So do you have any stories Mm. or any examples of what you've seen online? I would say like stories like, you know, like poor management. Like I've heard stories of how, you know, they overwork you and the manager doesn't care like that's very common in our profession because of the uh, studies that we have to do and the amount of patients we have to see so I think that could that is could be one hypothetically yeah I've right? seen a lot you of don't have with those yeah, you don't issues. have support from your managers upper management to be able to do your job and mm-hmm. that affects your your experiences at the workplace <laughs> Yeah. What I've been seeing is a lot of people responding to those um, saying like, if it's negative, leave that place. But I feel like it's just so hard sometimes. Like it's easier said than done. So what are some ways that you feel like people can do and or cope with this type of negative environment? Well, let me backtrack a little. For people that can leave are able to Mm -hmm. please do right because that's what I did (laughs) yeah and for those who are unable to I would just say that just I I would say take a a day or two you know go on PTO take a like get a new environment where you can reevaluate what's important I'm not saying quit your job I'm saying reevaluate what's important you know and then go back to work Like you want to go to work, do your best, best for your patient, best for yourself and go home. If that happens to you, like you're not going to be best friends with your coworkers. Just be cordial. Be, you don't have to be friendly. Just be nice. Just a nice human being and just be there for your patients. Just number one thing. And then go home and enjoy yourself. With yeah. your loved ones, the ones that actually care about you. Right. Like That's what I home. would say. <laughs> yeah, that's good advice. No, it, it really is because uh, I've dealt with that over my career in the last mm-hmm. couple of years. And um, there's always going to be those people who are negative or just kind of don't enjoy whatever is going on. And you really can't let that affect you yourself yeah. as a person. Um, it definitely is hard to deal with things in those environments like clicks or like favoritism. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes that does happen. And unfortunately, when it does happen, you really do have to stay strong for yourself and think about yourself and wonder what the consequences are if you do bring it up to like HR or like your manager mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, but it really is take it the opportunity to think about what's happening and try to process it first. That's what I like about our Discord community is because it's a safe space to like talk to each other or you and I talking. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a safe space. No, who you can talk to that's somebody you can trust. 
That's really important. Yeah. Having that um, support system, you know, during sonographer ultrasound school um, is important, but also having the support system when you're working is important mm-hmm. as well. Like if that were to happen to you at work, um, you know, you know that you have your friends, your, you know, loved ones at home that you can discuss it, vent, drink wine with, you know, go out to drinks with and just, you know, let it all out, reevaluate what's important to you and, you know, get a peace of mind out of it because people who do that, people who spread negativity, honestly, I believe that it's not your problem, it's theirs. It's something that they are going through or what's going on with them. Yeah. That they are doing this is not what you're doing. Because, you know, what you're doing is you just want to be here, do your best, you know, do your best job. Right. I can, I feel like as a sonographer, though, I can, when you say all that stuff, I feel like a mm-hmm. lot of it also that affects us is when, let's say you're working in a hospital setting and mm-hmm. the nurses like come at you with right. Attitude or a mm-hmm. doctor comes like storming into your ultrasound room and is like, Where are you at? Where's my patient online on the like on the list? Yeah, to get my patient next. And sometimes I feel like they forget that we're also very busy and we have mm-hmm. lots of patients. We don't just have that one patient, we don't just have that one doctor's like patient right. or or management who just only cares about numbers yeah uh, numbers productivity and all they see is your output and what like uh, as far as like a a numbers go like you say but for me it's like well did you understand that it takes a long time not just for the exam but like to take Mm -hmm. care good quality care of my patient so I think at the end of the day if you know you're doing your job Mm mm-hmm doing it the right way and in a way where you're not harming the patient, you're doing what's best for the patient, you're doing what's best for yourself as a sonographer, Mm -hmm. that's the best way to go. But this is going to be a negative part of being a sonographer because you're going to feel all of that. You're going to feel all the negativity or the attitude from whether it's your coworkers, doctors, nurses, or anyone. And it really is just a part of the medical field um and it's it sucks to say that but it also is a big part of it so we're trying yeah. to do our job and love our job while that's all happening right and another thing i want to know is that seniority is a big uh theme or big how how what's another word for theme like it happens Everywhere. quite often but, yeah like seniority like is seniority is a big big part of you know being a sonographer because everywhere you go you have you know your your senior technologist sonographers and then you have the junior technologist sonographers right and then um I've heard many times and this is in different departments as well so like oh this person's been here forever they just do whatever they want while you know there are entry le- uh not entry level but like newer um sonographers who come in you know they do everything according to how it's supposed to be but you they still don't get the seniority because seniority is an important factor or important aspect of being a sonographer in the workplace of a sonographer you know yeah it's tough because Yes, they put in all this time and and years into being yeah. a senior person at this place, mm-hmm. but also it's like you don't want to step on toes as a new grad, right. and then but then it turns into this toxic environment because you don't know what to like how you can like approach things or say things, right? Um, and yes, they put in their time, so that yes, that's what it like the positives of being a senior mm-hmm. sonographer. Um, but also it's like times change too and like as we get further with technology 
and, and sonographers become more aware of things it's almost like where is that balance or fine line right. of how you should be as a new grad and a senior sonographer and like sometimes for example there are those situations where senior sonographers don't want to be leads and then you've got mm -hmm. newer sonographers who have to take the reign of being a lead yeah mm -hmm. so almost probably causing a lot of friction um, yeah within the the department maybe yeah um I don't know if that's like but I, I, I know that's probably something that is common but isn't talked about often and a lot of times I think in departments things are like maybe swept under the rug or or getting know. overlooked right or like um like the seniority could lead to unfair treatment because that is part of it yeah yeah these are all things that really do happen and occur that people don't really talk about and uh I don't know it's just for me as a person, I'm the type of person that wants to just like come to work, do my job, make sure I'm not causing any trouble mm -hmm. and leave. Right. I want I want to clock in, do my thing, clock out, and go home. Mm -hmm. And dealing with negativity throughout your workplace, it's it really does bring a lot of you know we're already living in a anxiety filled society right now mm -hmm. that you don't need more all right so at the end of the day I feel like our brains are really powerful and you can only control what you can control yes so um I don't know when it comes to all this negative stuff we really do have to try to just try to get through it as best as we can there was also a topic that we put on here which also includes like something even deeper than all of this stuff which is harassment in a workplace mm -hmm. and not even just harassment but sexual harassment um so unfortunately these things do happen out there in the field so is there anything you want to touch up with that subject? Um, sexual harassment is a very important topic. As uh, you know, if you get hired somewhere, you're obviously going to have sexual harassment training. You're, every year, you're going to have sexual harassment training. It's now more than ever more... Um, it happens more often. So hence the training occurs more often. I just finished my sexual harassment training um, at my new place, which was literally three hours and I couldn't fast forward the videos, couldn't do anything. So that was uh, that was fun. Um, and a, a thing I wanted to say about sexual harassment is that I don't wish this upon anyone. It has happened to me, unfortunately. Um, I wanted to share it on the podcast because I don't want you guys who are listening, watching to feel that you're alone because this happened to me, not as a sonographer, but this is before I finished my program. So as a student, which I think kind of made it worse in a way. And it was at one of my clinical sites. Um, I was actually harassed by my preceptor. Uh, I notified the manager. I didn't get a response from the manager. I notified my program director. Um, had a talk with my program director. She went through the process of the school's uh, procedures when that happened. But nothing ever happened with the site itself. Nothing ever happened with, you know, to follow up. Um, I ended up blocking my preceptor's number because he was reaching out at inappropriate times outside of uh, clinical hours. And um, I wished I could have done more. I thought about it. Um, 
but I feel like there should be more resources because I know there's like um, a complaint on this is the real raw stuff, guys. Like I wish there was like a, there's a complaint section on ARDMS where you can file a complaint, but I I feel like it would apply. But I don't know. It's so vague that I don't right. know what to do, where to go, mm-hmm. you know, because I know that obviously um, does not align with ARDMS's, uh, you know, values and ethics and um, stuff. But uh, yes, so that happened. Uh, we wanted to, Giselle did ask if I wanted to share on the podcast. I believe it is an important topic to be shared on the podcast. It just happened um, over a year ago. So I feel like that was the right time to share because we have more um, sonography students now than ever. And being out there in sites, in hospital settings, in inpatient, outpatient clinics, um, those who are traveling, uh, any other, like they're ultrasound business now. So if you have students out there, just anybody that you relate to, you know, interact with, things could happen. So be on your toes, girls, guys. (laughs) everyone yeah everybody (laughs) yeah no I I mean but yeah I I really wanted to give you the space to talk about this I'm so sorry you went through all that I know Lynn had told me about it and the moment it happened yeah and I wanted to make sure that she when we did speak about this she was ready to talk about it um and we wanted to talk about you know all the negative things as a sonographer well she was a student even at that point so it's like all the negative things that can happen you know you don't think it would happen to you and then it does um so we want you guys to know that any form of harassment whether it be sexual or bullying or you know Verbal. verbal messaging physical any sort of harassment should not be tolerated and should be brought up to somebody as soon as possible. Um, And that is something that's like super serious, you know? And so it's definitely something I think that everybody needs to be aware about. Um, And we obviously hope that this doesn't happen to you, but if it has, or if it does, you need to find you know, a resource or someone to speak to about it. So of course, we'll put resources in the description boxes so that you guys can um, get help if you need help. But it's definitely something that shouldn't be taken lightly. And uh, we want you guys to know that we are here for you and um, you're not alone. So yeah, definitely um, big topic to to really... Have. I also didn't know how much she wanted to share or if she was even going to share today but I mean I'm so proud of her for being able to speak up and speak out and also be there to help others and still be the person you are today so I appreciate you you're very thank you like I thank you for being there when I vented to yes. you I'm like I can't believe this happened to me WTF I know I know because you never thought it could happen to you right and the moment it happened it's like did this really happen you know it's that and it sucks too because like you don't want this to happen and it it, like you never expect these things happen and then to know that we know that it does happen but it's like what do you do when it happens to you you know right it's one of those things I looked up to you very highly you know and I feel like and I know that you're like so strong so um we both just want to be here for you guys and as far as these negative experiences go a lot of people show the fluff and the butterflies and the happy parts and the great stuff all the time like on social media all the time you're gonna see all of that but it's not always going to be like that and 
I'm going to say your whole career from going, you know, being a new grad all the way to being a senior, there's going to be ebbs and flows, ups and downs, positive and negative experiences, pros and cons. Who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of years? You know, you right. never know. Last year, I was really thinking about quitting and trying to do something else. This year, I came back and I'm like, okay, you know, I still love what I do. You're going to have those feelings. Um, but we mm -hmm. just wanted to let you guys know, even though there are negative things, we are still enjoying what we do. I feel like if we didn't, we wouldn't be in it. We wouldn't be doing this podcast right after work either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Therapy is great, you guys. Yeah. Like just talking to someone and being able to share. Obviously, you don't like come home to your husband or wife and feel like you can trauma dump everything that you just went through yeah. um, to them because that's a lot too to take mm -hmm. in. But also know that, you know, you can you can have a community of people who understand and listen. Um, of course, if they are your biggest supporter, yes, of course, let them know like how you're feeling. Cause that, that's just a part, a little part of life, but a big part of it is being able to talk to others who understand what you're going through. Right. You know, your husband and your wife or your boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, aren't going to hundred percent understand. Um, what it's like to be a sonographer so definitely reach out to us and to our communities uh, if you need any advice or help and we're here for you guys yes and i believe that concludes this very heavy dense episode but we feel that it's very important that we have a dedicated episode for it because it could happen to any of you as it po has probably happened to us and it's not commonly shared on social media or anywhere. Um, we want you guys to have this episode as a resource to know that you're not alone and hopefully your takeaway from this is that we're here for you and yes. thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening, and as always, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for connecting through sounds with us. We appreciate you and can't wait to connect with you again next time.